I'm the only person who's kind of feeling a little bit, I won't say meh, but especially because I've been going out quite often, I find it hard, I wouldn't say hard, yeah, I find it hard to enjoy myself when I go out. And I'm also finding, I don't find it, I also feel not guilty, but I feel somewhat conflicted when it comes to just being joyful every day. Because I'm you're generally a quite a happy person. I'm generally quite a half glass full type of dude. But with with what's going on in Ukraine at the moment, you know, with the invasion from Russia and stuff, and seeing footage of that in real time, you know, for the most part, we're seeing it live. Um, we're getting accounts from all over the place, from different people, from loads of different parts of Ukraine, different socioeconomic levels, backgrounds, colors, creed, whatever it may be. We're seeing all perspectives basically beam to us through our phones whenever we want to see it. And it's making me feel a little bit, not guilty, but yes, yeah, somewhat guilty that, you know, we're all kind of going, we were kind of collectively going through a really tough time with the pandemic. We kind of all collectively were coming out of it in some way, shape or form, right? With the restrictions being relaxed and whatnot. And then somehow out of nowhere, a country that I was kind of exploring to go to. I think that's probably another reason why I kind of feel it more because I was legitimately thinking of doing Kiev instead of doing Berlin again, which I always do every year in terms of going Berkheim and stuff. I was like, okay, cool. Let me switch up a little bit for this year and do Kiev because I've been, you know, reading a lot about the techno scene there. Um, reading obviously about the techno scene in places like Georgia and Tbilisi and stuff in Copenhagen, but Ukraine was like my one place to go because I thought it's going to be a lot more different than places I've been to in terms of architecture, people, and stuff. You know, I mean, because I, I would in my head, I was like, oh, Tbilisi or Georgian people look quite similar in, the, in my head, weirdly, to people I've seen in Germany. So maybe just to kind of really change it up and kind of flip the script a bit and refresh myself and actually try something new and go to an interesting place. Let's check out Kiev you know, because I've never been there before. I've got no, no, I've known no one there. I think Tbilisi, I've got a couple of friends who I can kind of reach out to and know people. So it's a bit more close to home and you know in the blink of an eye my um possibility of going there to just enjoy myself in terms of a hedonistic situation completely vanished and then it made me think straight away imagine me being bummed about that imagine people that are living there regularly like everyday life going to work in a bar going to i don't know t take their kids to school and then suddenly a flip of a switch you know their whole life has been completely upended and now these very same people have now turned into refugees they're now seeking asylum or seeking safety in countries that they would probably have never imagined they would be living in for the near future because how long is this going to last for you right if you decide to upend or if this war has caused you to take your entire life your entire family across a border to a neighboring country like a poland or whatnot there's no guarantee that this is going to be a one month thing a two month thing six month you know eight months a year this could be indefinite and now you have to completely what um, start a new life in a new country in a place that you never thought you'd be going to it's just bizarre and i think maybe seeing as well some of the negative reaction to it on social which i can understand why you know if you're somebody who's very so who's very um politically minded who um, cares about you know loads of these world issues going on at the same time yemen syria israel um somalia right you you are very in tune with the plight of people around the globe who are suffering it really is annoying to see how receptive uh, the mainstream media has been to the plight of ukrainians because i guess for the most part they look like the majority of your people who basically present this mainstream news which makes complete sense in some regard and you know they have a similar way of life to what we have here in the uk and other parts of america i get it it's annoying i understand but just in general, I just think in general, considering what we've been through in the pandemic, considering what's going through with this, it just seems like, you know, nonstop catastrophes, nonstop disruptions, nonstop um, destabilization in terms of us, you know, just as we feel like we're about to start getting our bearings back and get back to some semblance of normality, something comes and reminds us that no, 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 we're not in con control of everything. Sorry, we're not in control of anything. And I think that's basically maybe the main point of it no matter how much in control you feel you are you're not you're basically at the mercy of whatever happens um and when it happens it happens and you have to just deal with the situation how you have to deal with it um it's really really mad but i am finding myself especially the other day when i went to fold just sitting there and weirdly kind of you know again maybe it's because i spent too much time on the war ukraine report 
is it or ukraine war report subreddit right that's you know i would recommend checking it out before you go to bed but i do and i stay up too late reading and watching clips and stuff um it kind of you know i was in a club the other day and i just you know randomly thought of a clip i saw randomly heard Zelensky's voice in my head randomly heard you know shelling and bombing and just random stuff just popped into my head i just started getting a bit sad and thinking man like look at me in this pedantic club with this great sound system with people who have no care in the world and just are living in the moment in that precise moment having the time of their life yet here i am you haven't time of your life yet you know many thousands of miles away people that look just like you and i are struggling and don't know you know you know haven't seen their family you know because i remember seeing a clip of this like um grave that they put together where there was many many people who had been unidentified for unaccounted for which is really really troubling and sad as well it's just it's just a shame all around and it? it really is a really crying out shame and i can only just imagine what it's like to go through day to day being an actual ukrainian over there i can only imagine the only thing that brings me some semblance of um solace or you know that kind of eases my worriness has been the response in europe seeing these videos and clips of people in europe all over the place offering up you know homes and being the you know i've seen clips of people in, in kind of train stations in berlin meeting refugees who have nothing and welcoming their kids and people going up dressed as clowns and giving away free gifts and toys and chocolates and sweets just to kind of make their day it's just ugh. You know sometimes you despair about humanity remember in the beginning of the pandemic you see all these crazy karen videos and people calling the police on people for dumb things and fights and stuff and then on the flip side you see you know when people are really struggling and need help for the most part most human beings you know part of if you're you know except if you're flipping dark side feel or something most people feel that selflessness comes out of them and they don't you know it doesn't matter if they got the last pound in their pocket the last shirt on their back they'll give it to you if it means they're going to be able to help you out and it's great to see that response from our neighbor from our former eu neighbors um but yeah man it's been mad it's been mad um moving on to that actually quite a crazy story about how mad it's been i'm sure some of you guys have seen this viral video sorry viral clip that went around from ukraine outside of the maternity hospital i think it was in mario poor mario poor i forgot how you pronounce the name of it of this lady on a stretcher that was pregnant holding her belly as she's being led out of the building that got bombed um obviously by russia and um I think at the time when the video when the clip went viral i remember seeing a couple of people on twitter especially women and stuff who are basically pointing out to the fact that it was a good sign that she was holding her belly quite instinctively as she was being kind of stretched out it kind of meant she was somewhat conscious so there was hope that maybe she would be alive and stuff and be able to kind of give birth to the baby but unfortunately the update we've heard here courtesy of bbc is that the pregnant woman and the baby died after the hospital was shelled and again that was another kind of reason why it's been hard to kind of enjoy things and kind of be able to kind of um what you call it recapture whatever vibe we had in 2019 pre-pandemic you know things just don't get better like things only get worse before they get better that's basically what i'm trying to basically say with this and then i saw another report about um, large parts of china different provinces are now going back into lockdown because of rising cases it's just like god damn it man it never ends but yeah the article says as follows a pregnant woman wounded in a russian bombing of ukrainian maternity hospital has died along with her baby reports say um images showed her on the stretcher following the airstrike of mariupol um last wednesday which at least three other people were killed after the place um after sorry after the place where she was meant to give birth was attacked she was taken to another hospital her baby was born cesarean section but showed no signs of life the surgeon tumor told social press agency the woman's pelvis burn had been crushed and her hip had been detached this is the most horrible part of it medics said that they were trying to save her life she realized she was losing her baby and shouted kill me now can you imagine the pain that must go through a woman's body when she's unable to give birth to a baby that's alive or something especially in this sort of situation like can you imagine the pain and sorrow that you must be going through especially when you think about you know because that's the thing that people don't remember or don't keep in mind a lot of these people who are now becoming refugees i'd imagine um they're probably a huge majority of these people, especially nowadays who are leaving 
they get in first of all they get in on trains where they have no idea where they're going or they're going to destinations where they have no family you know um then you're having to go there and restart your life so you're already poor in the country that you're in because i remember checking out kiev to go for the most part the way of life there was incredibly cheap I remember i was checking bars and stuff to go to and i went to go there before and i remember seeing this um really decent place that served like burgers and beer which is a great kind of estimate to see how much it's gonna how cheap life is in a certain place and i'm pretty sure i remember seeing a place where they had like you know great kind of homemade style burgers where they actually got the you know they made the made the patty of the meat and shit and they had brioche buns and you know beer that was kind of you know trendy nice sort of beer and the whole entire meal with fries with a drink and all that good stuff was like three euros four euros or something like that so it's clearly a place where um you would imagine if you like on the somewhat the poverty line um, you don't really have the funds or the savings available for you to then relocate your entire family um, to a completely different country, especially if they have a higher cost of living. So you can only imagine those things sort of playing in someone's mind, right? They're like, okay, cool. I'm going through all this struggle, all this strife, this war in my country, but at least I have this ray of sunshine, you know, that's kind of growing inside of me, this innocent baby that's going to be able to somewhat give me some semblance of um, happiness through this dark time. And then you try to give birth and then that baby is unfortunately um, not alive. You probably do want to kill yourself. You probably do want to die. There's no point of living because your actual reality outside of that pregnancy is bleak. Um, I can only imagine the pain. Literally can only imagine. When it became clear that the child was still born, they tried to resuscitate the mother but realized after 30 minutes that it was hopeless. And I remember someone saying the same thing about, um, I forgot who, maybe, maybe it was like Ralphie May or I forgot it was some sort of comedian the first time i heard of the phrase dying of a broken heart i think this comedian was basically um you know i think they ended up breaking up with their partner or something and ended up kind of going through a bit of a downward depression spiral which effectively led to them kind of passing away even though they had health complications anyway beforehand they said the ultimate thing that kind of still the deal was the broken heart thing and i think they you see that a lot happening with like older couples when they're really really close and they end up dying within like a short period they end up dying within like a um, close period of time that happens quite often so i can only imagine that can be one of the things but one good story to come out of that has been the other lady which was the influencer blogger type lady called um mariana veshi gurskaya um who has successfully given birth to her child i remember this image going kind of viral seeing this kind of bloodied girl walking down the steps of a building that's clearly been bombed um heavily heavily pregnant um, and she obviously um, luckily happily god's grace was able to go give birth to a baby um don't know if it's a or daughter here you see here maybe the partner holding it so yeah great to see in that regard so anyway man i, I don't know i sorry to start the show like this but i've been thinking about it a lot it's been hard to get out of my mind i think more, a lot of you probably been feeling the same way and for myself if someone's been actually going out and trying to live a somewhat normal life especially in the uk we're kind of back to some semblance of normality you know um most restrictions are basically gone um there was even a tweet i saw recently about british airways saying that they're going to um take away the mandatory need to have like um face masks and stuff so we're back to some semblance of normality and still stuff like this is impacting um myself and my ability to live a normal life because i'm like why do i get to live a normal life and these people don't you know especially given the circumstances that we've all collectively gone through um why do i get the opportunity to go out and do what i want but these people don't get the opportunity to do so it really is completely unfair but i guess that's kind of one of the parts of life we all have to kind of put up with in it i guess is what we have to put up with 